All right, well, we are down in Lancaster County this morning here in a Shanks Ferry Wildflower, Wildflower Preserve. So I'm here for a number of other reasons, but one reason is uh, that there, there was a dynamite factory back here. There was a village here of Shanks Ferry. You may have already seen that video, or I forget what order I'm going to put these in, but there was also a dynamite factory back here in the early 1900s, like around 1906, something like that. But it, it blew up, and it killed 11 men in the process, blew them to bits. It's, this is kind of a gruesome story, but I'm hoping to find the ruins of that dynamite factory, and I'm hoping even to get to the, well, more than hoping, I'm planning on going to the church where these men are buried, uh, the Colemanville United Methodist Church. There's only two graves there. 11 men died, but only two graves, so yeah, you'll find out why. You, you might be able to guess why there's only two graves, but... Um, there wasn't much left after the explosion. Sorry about that. Uh, so, but I'm hoping to find these dynamite ruins. Um, these are mentioned to me by a viewer. I've heard about them before, but uh, I didn't have exact directions, and he kind of gave, gave, well, didn't give me a map, but kind of described where it's at. So, I'm hoping we can find it. And we'll talk more about the gruesome events that happened there. Uh, it's kind of a sad story, but it's still it's an interesting piece of history. So, we will get on going. Hopefully, we can find, find these ruins here today. All right, so to find this old dynamite factory, I am gonna head up the main wildflower trail here at Shanks Ferry. And the directions tell me to cross, there's two uh, cuts that come across the trail for a pipeline and a power line, I think. I think they said once you pass the PPNL cut that there's a trail that should go off to your right and cross the creek, and that's what I'm gonna be looking for. They said that should, should be a winding trail that takes me to the site. So we'll see, hopefully, hopefully that happens, so. Kind of, they said there's not a ton of ruins there, but it's still kind of a cool place to go. And like I said, we'll go back, we'll go to that church then, see if we can find, see if we can find those tombstones. So, all right, let's do this. I'm kind of looking forward to see what we can find. So the directions I had said past the PPNL cut. This is like the power line cut, and they said there'd be a trail that goes off to the right. Of course, the main trail continues on that way. So I'm hoping that this is the correct spot that'll take us to the uh, to the remains of that dynamite factory because it looks like the trail does cross the creek and wind around about the hill there. So that's what they said it would do. So I'm hoping they're correct. We shall find out together. Yeah, so the trail is going to cross the creek here and it said it kind of would wind up around a hill. So I'm hoping that the remains are just up in there. Okay, so there, there are all kinds of trails. A trail goes up that way. There's a trail that goes down that way. I can see it going down in through the hollow here. So, do I go that way? Or do I go up that way? To find the dynamite factory. Person said the trail winds around the hill, so I'm gonna go into the hollow here. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm also looking for that cemetery, but I have a feeling the cemetery might be up that way, but that's for another video. So I think we'll wind our way around down and go that way first. So we're just gonna keep following this trail, see if Fat remains are up here, the dynamite factory. Um, I did find the cemetery that I was looking for. Just came back from filming that, so that's cool. Now let's hope we can find the last thing here, this dynamite factory. So there should be a sign out here in some ruins. Looks like a pretty big trail, so it should lead to something. All right, I see the sign up here. We are at the spot, good. Oh uh, yeah, I recognize this from the, this online. Site of dynamite factory explosion, June 9th, 1906. 11 men lost their lives here. So we will look around a little bit, so we can find. I'll talk about the story here a little bit. Oh yeah, you can definitely see there was a building right in there. 
so. But, uh, all right, well, I'm gonna look around just a little bit and I'll get back with you. Yeah, so down there was a sign, but I don't think this was a building here. This is kind of a cut going up through the hills here, but um, over there, I see kind of a flat area. Looks like we'll head over there. Maybe a building was over there. I was told that there wasn't a whole lot left to see um, building-wise because it was, a, it was an explosion which destroyed pretty much everything here. And we'll talk about that momentarily. I just want to see if I can find any type of structure here. Alright, so this flat area that I came up to just looks like an old road that goes up that way. So it's probably where they hauled the dynamite out of here. Of course, the sign was down there somewhere. So there really isn't... I'm not really seeing any ruins at this spot. I will go ahead and show you a picture or two of what was here. Um, and attach, you know, on those pictures will be the website that I got them from. These are not my pictures, obviously, because they're from 1906. I was not around. And then I will tell you what happened here. It's kind of gruesome. So we didn't find any ruins here yet, just the sign. But that kind of does make sense because of the nature of what happened here. Um, first thing you should know about these dynamite factories, they were only built to last a couple of years. Um, they would build them, use them for a couple of years, and then build another one somewhere else. Because as they made the dynamite and the explosives, um, dust from the process would settle into the cracks of the building on the floor and stuff, making the whole building very explosive and dangerous because it would, it would there'd be a buildup of explosive material in the building so instead of I got flies all around me so they would uh for safety reasons they would uh okay there's a fly annoying me terribly for safety reasons they would uh rebuild them somewhere else but apparently you know as it always goes uh in this case they decided to keep using the building and they think that's one reason why it exploded because there was a buildup of explosive dust in the building. So, considering that these buildings were only built to last temporary, you wouldn't expect to find real permanent ruins of them. And, yeah, so they don't know, there was about, they figure it was about 2,500 pounds of explosives blew up in the building. Whether the explosives blew up first or the accumulated dust, no one really knows. But when it blew, it, it blew. The whole building was destroyed and 11 men that were inside the building were blown literally to pieces. Um, and that's, yeah, and when they came looking for remains, that's what they found was pieces. In fact, in the cemetery we're going to go to, there's only two gravestones. One contains 10, the pieces of 10 men, and the other contains maybe, I think, I think the wrist of one guy, because one guy had a birthmark on his wrist that a family member or a friend recognized, so they knew it was that guy, but all the other parts that they found they threw into one grave and buried them there so yeah there were other people here in other buildings that survived but they were like thrown out of windows and stuff all kinds of stuff and people miles away heard the boom there's houses not too far away whose windows were shattered and stuff like that and they talk about how far away the boom was heard it's called one of the largest explosions in Lancaster County or something like that so interesting story it's kind of sad to, you know, it doesn't matter what time you live in, people shirk safety issues and people die because of it. So, so this could this could be an, another haunted location, you never know. I was talking about that up at the cemetery, you know. It'd be cool maybe to do a, a haunted thing there, but same with here. I mean, 11 men lost their lives rather violently here. So, who knows if they're, you know, unrestful spirits still linger. All right, I would like to mention what the dynamite was being used for. It's kind of odd maybe to have a 
dynamite factory in the middle of nowhere like this, but they were using the dynamite to build the Enola low grade railroad, which is back behind me, which I mentioned several times, to, you know, for blasting through cuts and hills and stuff. And when that was done, they were then using it for construction of the Holtwood Dam, which is a lot down along the Susquehanna River that way. So that's why this dynamite factory was out here. Um, and what I thought was an old road over there, I think is the old is an old rail bed that came to the factory because in one of the pictures that I'll, hopefully I'll show earlier, um, you see a railroad bed. And I think that's what that is over there across the creek. So at least I'm going to guess. Um, I know there are some other ruins out here, but um, I don't think those all had to do with the factory. But I don't, I'm running out of time here today. There's some storms on the way. And I want to get to that church too. I want to show you the graves of those those two graves at the church. The United, the Colemanville United Methodist Church, it's called. So I'm hoping to get there yet today here. Um, yeah, I was hoping to find some more ruins, but that's okay. You know, I, w I wanted to find the site and be able to tell a story, and we were able to do that here. So, all right. Well, I'm going to get on hiking back to the truck, and we'll try and find the church. And find the graves of these people, these men here that lost their lives. So let's let's get going to do that. I feel like I can feel a storm coming. So anyway, let's get going. I got a bit of a walk. All right. Well, I haven't made it back to the truck yet, but I spoke too soon about not finding any ruins. So I was kind of hustling back, and I just looked off to the side here, and there are some ruins right over here at least some foundation of something here there is stuff out here you can clearly see a stone foundation there it's all up there a little bit so cool there is a building here let's walk down in here all right it pays to not give up hope so i'm not sure which building this was it was there were in some of the pictures there's a much longer building this was probably an off I'm gonna assume that this was an office building here so all right good found something out here yes yeah, so the stories did mention an, like an office building where people didn't die but they were like thrown out of the building by the force of the blast so this may have been that location I'm, I'm thinking maybe all right, good. That makes me more, makes me more happy. We found another site, and now the wind is picking up and it's getting cloudy. So I think I think I need to move. <laughs> I do have an umbrella with me, but I'd rather not be caught out here in a storm. Somewhere maybe might be severe today. All right, good. And also too, if you want better directions or coordinates to that site, I can give the, you can send me a message, an email or a Facebook message, and I'll get that information to you. Or otherwise, you can try and follow the directions I gave in the video, if they make any sense. All right, I guess I'm gonna try and get to that church before the storms come. So we are at the church now, Coleman, Colemanville United Methodist Church. And those look like the older tombstones up there, so we're going to head up there, see if we can find these graves. Well, we're in the right area. There's 1899, 1905, so these all died in 1906, so we're in the right area. It's just a matter of finding the correct graves now, so... All right, we got to keep looking. Well, here it is. I, I asked... Uh, that couple, there's an older couple down there. They're doing the same thing I did. They're out here uh, looking for this exact same tombstone. We got to talking about the uh, the factory and what happened there and stuff. But it's kind of neat because they, even in their old age, they're doing exactly what I'm doing. He mentioned how, you know, there's stuff right here in your backyard to find cool stories and stuff. But anyway, this is the one tombstone that has ten of them. I counted the names here. There's ten. You know, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is where the ten people were buried, but there was eleven. I mentioned that there was the eleventh guy, they actually did, they found a section of his wrist that had a birthmark on it, 
and a friend or a family member recognized that wrist as belonging to him. So somewhere here, there's a tombstone or a grave with just a piece of a wrist buried into it with a name somewhere, but I don't know which one that is. I might look around a little bit more, but this is where the 10 are buried, or at least what they found left of the 10, the pieces and stuff of them. So here it is, June, in memory of those who, in memory of those who bet death in the explosion of dynamite, June 9th, 1906. All right, well, I'm going to have to give up the search for that 11th guy. I don't know where he's at. The website said that the tombstones are right next to each other, the two. The one with the 10 in and the one with just the one guy. But uh, I didn't see anything there. Who knows? Internet isn't always true. <laughs> but anyway, he might not, maybe he's not even in here, but I thought he was. So but anyway, it's been a long day, so I think I might I'll probably head on home. But anyway, this was a fun adventure. You know, it's fun just searching for history, and it's fun. Met that old couple, and they're like, I don't know how old they were. They're probably in their 80s, and they're doing exactly what I am, but they're just not um, quite going off trail into the woods and stuff like I am. But they're out here looking for history and stuff. So you should do the same thing. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching my videos, and I will see you around in the next adventure, wherever that may be.